what's the benefit of making those sh short calls? Is it that higher energy? There's, there's both. Um, one of the things, I have a colleague that works in the lab right next to me that, that studies Coulomb imaging of molecules. And this is the idea of trying to make um, stop action movie, as it were, of molecules movie, to watch how the energy distributes itself, maybe in a larger molecule. And so you need a short pulse because the timing of that jitter is, is so short. But it's not like uh, watching something like a horse running, which is one of the first applications of this back in well, hundred some years ago. Uh, to see a molecule, you need a different technique than just imaging it because it's too small to be seen. And so we need the high intensities to actually ionize the molecule so we can watch the electric charges move around. And so we do need both short pulses for the timing, but we also need the high intensity in order to have the imaging technique. And in terms of the imaging, I guess you're, you're giving a system a massive kick with this uh, laser pulse. I mean, does that change what you're viewing? And I mean, maybe that's a, a question for another research in terms of viewing. Uh, you're sort of changing the system every time you sort of hit it with this laser. Ah, uh, no. Okay, so it, it's called Coulomb explosion energy. And the idea is that, and, and certainly we teach in our very first year uh, class of electricity and magnetism, we start rubbing rubber and stuff with, and we, and we put charges in little kith balls and we watch the move apart because of the Coulomb force or roof together, you know, triumph or different of the same charges. Um, and so this idea with our lasers now, and the reason we have this laser hammer, we really just take those electrons right off the uh, atoms. And so you have two atoms, and they're so close together, right? They're less than a nanometer apart. And we take, if you go into the 10 set, you take one charge from each of these atoms. That means you have these two atoms with a set of a pith ball that's a millimeter away, <laughs> a nanometer away, and that ex they just explode. And so it's very quick. Uh, and so it just tells you the energy that it goes away with tells you how close it was. And that's what you need. And so you have two. You, you, you pump it into some level that you want to watch how that would vibrate. And then at a certain time delay, hit it with that thing. How far apart was it? But the, you, you know, you have to do it over and over again. But you can do the stop action movie by just changing it that way. Uh, I guess when la lasers have sort of came from science fiction into research labs, and are now finding applications. Do you think lasers are going to sort of build and build and sort of be a defining technology of the 21st century? Or do, do you feel... Oh, we at Optics do like to say that electronics was the uh, technology of the 20th century and photonics will be the technology of the 21st century. You know, it's mostly the lasers famous for being, you know, an application or a technique without any applications. But I would say very early on, we got the barcode reading uh, with lasers. It was already in the 70s. By the time I got into research in 1981, uh, that was already existing. Uh, I think there was probably already uh, some laser welding going on with the CO2 lasers. So uh, actually, I think it's a uh, technique. It found applications right away. But now, as we get more and more lasers, they can, you know, they're going all the way almost to the x-rays to the far infrared, that it's finding techniques in everything, medicine, machine, and communications. There's really always nothing that uh, optics doesn't touch. Most people don't realize that in a Google data center, right? They think it's all electronics. There's still a million lasers there because it would take too long. Electrons move so much slower than light. So to go from place to place, it's still light. I just want to pick up on describing the sort of interaction of matter with ultrafast lasers. Again, just to pick up the expression. And sort of what useful information we gain from such sharp snapshots of what's happening at uh, molecular level? Well, first, there's, there's two reasons to do short courses. Uh, one of them is just to measure something fast, right? So, uh, so at the fire bridge started with just trying to, you know, or all the sheet off of the horses off the uh, ground at the same time, and you could just, just set a bunch of cameras to watch that happen um, uh, to know. And so you need a shorter term pulse if you want to watch faster and faster motion. So the outer second community is actually watching electron but the other reason to use syrup pulse again is the point of CPA is to pack that punch into uh, the syrup pulse, and that's when you can now do machining. Um, and so you can cut glass, and, and this is it's a transparent object. It used to be that if you couldn't absorb the light, you couldn't machine it. And now we can machine uh, transparent objects. And in between these two is there's uh, different types of multi-photon imaging. 
and you need short pulses again in order to have this nonlinear effect happening. But it, you're la you can image objects that, that regular one photon imaging at a time does not work with. So and there's a few different places where ultrafast helps. Do you see it? Uh... Do you see through your own research or intuition, do you see there being a, a hard limit to how short and powerful these pulses can be? Or do you, do you, what are the sort of technological difficulties in getting shorter and shorter and higher and higher intensity pulses? Well, scientists always just push the limits, so I have no doubt that we will keep pushing the limits. Uh, but the problem is really, uh, again, we now have megajoule lasers instead of kilojoule lasers, so we can go the brute force way. It will be the grading that's the technology limit. It was the technology limit why it took uh, so many years to go from it. Uh, what I could do to putting it on the big lasers, it was figuring out how to make gradients large and how to make them with high damage thresholds. Uh, but I think now the point is, is that if you really want to go shorter and shorter, you can only go as short as a period of light. So you have to go up into the V, V down higher and higher to the ultraviolet towards the X-rays. You can that also, you can only focus down the beam size to wavelengths. So as you actually shorten the wavelength by an order of magnitude, you can increase the intensity by three orders of magnitude to an area one at a time. So we've gotten to add a second, which is in the V and V, and they are the hundred times shorter. But it's not six orders of magnitude and in intensity because it takes the efficiency to get to add a second is, is drop the energy by that same six orders of magnitude. So we have to figure out ways to either amplify that or to get to uh, the extra V in a more efficient manner.